around the world of college football to Kirby Smart's ginormous new contract. Well, after everybody picked their jaws up off the floor, it was just another recognition of this is the cost of winning a national championship in college football. And this is where the sport is at. And it's a further example of the greater divide between the haves and have nots. If you want to win a national title, you have to pay for it. And the teams that can afford these coaching salaries, the facilities, the razzle-dazzle flash that you need to impress recruits, those are the ones that are going to continue to be in the hunt. And as, as we see the Big Ten and the SEC continue to rake in the big bucks, so are their coaches. Yeah, indeed. Paul, when you heard this news, what did you think? I thought it's really not that big a deal because uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman make more a year to do Monday Night Football on ESPN. <laughs> I like it. Oh, I like it. That's what we needed early in the morning. All right. By the way, speaking of coaches making a lot of money, there was Nick Saban. Of course, he's making the mo he's making the second most on an average annual year salary. And we know that he and Jimbo Fisher had a little dust up earlier this year. Well, here's what Jimbo had to say yesterday about it. We're great. We two competitive guys that go at it. Listen, we all learn from things we do in our business. You got two competitive guys on a on a topic that is very uh, everywhere, as they say. I have great respect for Nick and thing. You know, that's unfortunately our thing went public, and that's that's sometimes that happens in this world. Nothing's private anymore, is it? We're great. Okay, Jimbo, if you say so, Paul. You had a chance to interview Jimbo Fisher yesterday. What was your single's biggest takeaway from that conversation? I, I was I was impressed by how he could say all that with a straight face, right? And I, I give him a lot of credit. If he coaches that well, he'll win a couple of national championships in College Station. One thing he didn't do was apologize. One of the reporters asked him, are you going to apologize to Nick Saban? He went off on that rant. But I did not hear uh, any apology because Jimbo Fisher's fans like what he did. He stood up to the bully. Not only did he beat him on the field, uh, he, he, he slapped him around in that press <laughs> conference, although many people think he went to far ultimately this is going to fade for now but ryan don't think this has gone away they'll meet on october 8th and it will be regurgitated ad nauseum yes and i cannot wait to see them match up on october 8th what a day <laughs> that's going to be now before we let you guys go heather you snuck in a really surprising prediction on the show yesterday we got to revisit it for those who didn't hear who is your favorite to win the national championship Ohio State. And that's right. I said it from my chair at SEC Media Days. God forbid. But I'll tell you why. <laughs> ESPN's FPI gives Ohio State a 73% chance to win its conference. That's better than any team in any conference. And if you can win your league, and especially the Big Ten, you've got a chance at the top four. But beyond that, they have the number one projected offense coming back in college football a year after leading the FBS in offensive efficiency. But the missing piece of the puzzle was the defense. Paul, they hired Jim Knowles from Oklahoma State. I'll give you a number. 4.3 yards per play last year for Oklahoma State. That is the fewest in a single season for a Big 12 team since 2009. They put those pieces of the puzzle together. I don't know. I think Bama and Georgia have some competition on the Big Ten. I like the argument. Paul, you're from the heart of SEC country. What's your reaction? You know, Ryan, I'll just tell you a little off the off the off the record conversation here. I when I heard that, I was so upset. I have a little bit of influence in the SEC. I immediately ordered her to be thrown out of media days. <laughs> and as the police were walking toward her, I finally decided to call it off. <laughs> but, but you know what? She's she's also wrong because Alabama's going to win the national championship. You know, Robert, I'll start with you on this one. Who's coming out of the NFC? Oh, actually, excuse me, Jeremy, I'll start with you. you Let's do our me? picks. Who's coming out of the NFC? Okay, I'm, I'm going to go a little left here. 49ers. 49ers. Trey Lance going to the Super Bowl in year one. It's a little off base, but if we're going by the Rams blueprint, which is star power, Five star players get you to that game. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the 49ers because they have several of them. You got Nick Bosa, you got Trent Williams, you got George Kittle, you got Devo Samuel, all these guys all over the field. Fred Warner, it's going to come together for them at some point. And, you know, Garoppolo, look, he's done a good job, but maybe they needed somebody to bring him to the next level. And wow. Trey Lance, I'm told he's had a really good offseason. I know there's some doubters, questions about arm fatigue, all this other stuff that's gone on in the last 12 months. I think once he gets on the field and figures it out, it could be an explosion of success. Okay, you're a brave man for picking the Niners. Robert, I'll go to you. 
Hey, Jeremy, I like the Niners pick, man, but I'm going to go with the Rams, and here's my reasoning. The Rams were not a great football team last year. On defense, they were the 15th ranked defense. They had the 25th ranked rushing attack. Matthew Stafford led the league in interceptions, and they found a way to get hot when it mattered most and won the Super Bowl. So when you talk about that and how they got better this offseason, yes, they lost Von Miller, but they brought in Bobby Wagner, giving them a Hall of Fame level player on all three levels of the defense. Aaron Donald up front, Bobby Wagner in the middle, and Jalen Ramsey on the backside. They also brought in Allen Robinson on the offensive side of the ball, a true number one wide receiver to take partner with Cooper Cup and the rest of their offensive weapons. I think the Rams are going to come into this year a lot more confident, and they will be a better team, so you don't want to bet against them. Okay, Mike T. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and not because of Tom Brady, because of Todd Bowles. Mm. They have upgraded at the head coaching mm. position, taking nothing away from Bruce Arians. Yeah. I think Todd Bowles has a legitimate chance to be a coach of the year. He did an underrated job at the Jets. This defense is loaded at all three levels. If their secondary stays healthy, we're going to be talking about this Buccaneer defense as much as Tom Brady in the offense. You know, I, you've been saying that over and over again. Todd Bowles, Todd Bowles. I, I cannot wait to watch him work this year. Yep. I mean, it didn't go so well with the Jets, but, you know, he could really do incredible things here. So I yep. say the Bucks, And I don't often give credit to other people for the analysis that I give, but I got to give you credit because you said it best this morning when we talked about it. They have a top 10 player at every position. So this is outside of Brady. Yeah. This team is loaded They're deep. top yeah. to bottom. I don't think anybody is deeper, and we know as you get later in the season, guys start trailing off. You got guys getting injured. The Bucks are better positioned, I think, than yeah. any team to win it all. So, Robert, you're the only one uh, who's pulling for the Rams. Why not Tampa? They don't have Gronkowski, okay? You said a top 10 player at every position. Well, what, what top 10 <laughs> tight end do they have? Well, Come on now. Rob no, Gronkowski yeah. is the, is the Gronk, biggest loss be back, for the right? Bucks. What is he going to be back? Big, 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 big. Hold on. Well, R- thought, yeah. RG3. I'm going to quote RG3. You said he's huh? going to be back, and I agree with yeah. you. So I'm, I count I, Gronk in the top I, 10. I, I think, listen, guys, I – I need Gronk to come back, okay? I need him to come back so I don't got to jump in the East River. All right? But right now, Gronk is not back, and I'm jumping in the East River. So he is a big loss. 48 touchdowns, zero interceptions in the, in the last two years for Brady with Gronk on the field in the red zone. That's a massive loss. He's the greatest tight end of all time. So that's the one spot that they don't have a top 10 player, and I think that's a big loss for them, but that's why I wouldn't pick the Bucks right now. But, hey. He might well, be coming well, back. You never know. Well, well now I'm not, I'm not going to jump in the East River. I'm just hard-pressed to think that on November 1st, when Tom Brady <laughs> calls him and says, hey, we need 20 plays a game, third down red zone. His girlfriend said he's coming back. His agent, Drew Rosenhaus, said he's coming back. And you can't play 20 plays a game to help us get to a championship. <laughs> I'm hard-pressed to, that, to say that uh, Rob Gronkowski is going to say to Tom Brady, no. I love the argument. You can't play 20 games. You, you can't play 10 plays, 5 plays, whatever yeah. it takes, bro. And, and the Bucks were shaking when he retired. <laughs> yeah. like, like, they love really? the guy. There's a feeling of, like, whoever we get in here tight end, he's not Gronk. And, yeah. and so, you know, they're hopeful. I mean, they're with you. They don't want to jump in the river either. <laughs> Tell them every day you can party and you just play five plays on Sunday and you're good. And he'll be back. We'll see. I don't know what's better, though.